Hello and welcome back. In today's video I'm going to do a very quick peek at a NAS brand that we're seeing making some very aggressive moves in the DIY scene and one that I would argue in the first quarter, maybe even the first two quarters of 2024 is really going to kick off. I'm talking about the Ooh Star brand. Now again, maybe I've pronounced that wrong. Is it AO Star? AR Star? I'm going to go with Ooh Star or Owl Star. Genuinely no idea how to pronounce that. I'm really, really sorry if I'm offending anyone with that. But I'm going to culminate to this one later on. But ultimately, this is about a brand that has already existed for a while in the mini PC scene. And now we're seeing them really attack quite, you know, viciously almost the DIY NAS scene. Now we're going to talk about this device later on. But I wanted to allude to it to give you some idea about where this brand is going with this solution. But if we were to rewind time just a fraction, I just want to talk about how things have been moving for this brand quite quickly. Now, this is the Ustar R1. We actually alluded to this in an earlier video a few months ago in the background when we were talking about DIY NAS options. And this is an Intel N100. So that is the Intel Splinter after they got rid of uh, Pentium and Celeron processors there. This is that merged family in the N100 processor there. Arriving um, with different options of DDR4 memory and arriving with uh, Wi-Fi connectivity, arriving with 2.5 gigabit Ethernet. This is a very capable little two bay there and i think a lot of users would have to all agree that as much as the idea of win 11 is going to be realistically we're all going to slap some sort of third party os on that an open media vault here an unraid there a true nas the other and for a two bay nas it's actually quite an interesting proposition but then you dig a little deeper and then you find there's actually a second version that was the r1 and this is the r7 now this is a ryzen 7 powered system here this cpu the 5700u and this is an eight core processor system there do take note of that price tag by the way because that is going to be a matter of discussion later on but this is again a two bay system here arriving with a very competent um cpu for a two bay probably one of the most powerful two bay nasses i've ever talked about on the channel no doubt and it's arriving with a decent spec of hardware again a couple of 2.5 gig port if we zoom in here and get a closer look we've got a couple of 2.5 gbe ports we've got internal m2 nvme slots we've got ddr4 memory and all of that rolled into a two bay with top down loading so hot swapping is also on the table there's a lot to like on this system and a visual output again regardless of its support of it arriving windows 11 i think again majority of us couldn't care less because we want to use it for a third party os but it's really that price point that we need to dig into there because that price point for this little two bay knocking around at 419 dollars seems not wildly cheap but certainly for a two bay like this one with an eight core 16 thread ryzen processor very impressive indeed in terms of efficiency and I'm not the only one that thinks it, clearly, because pre-ordering has begun for a number of these uh, solutions here over on Amazon.com. We've got the Ryzen 7 5700 version knocking around at $419 and that N100 at $320 there. So whether you go through their own store or you choose to go via the Amazon options there... There's a lot to be said for this DIY solution here in a two-bay NAS. Now, this has been further improved upon for this brand that we're trying to keep an eye on here that seems to be moving lightning fast now with them rolling out a new four bay here clearly taking something of a leaf some might say from that u green dxp system route where they weren't they were thinking do you know what we're just going to go wholesale of all of our solutions at once and this is their new four bay solution broken down into the different architectures there with three different SKUs. again the n100 now the appearance of the n305 uh these older lake processors and then that ryzen 7 again this is arriving with a great base level of hardware and remember those cpu Use, as they detail here in this little putting article that they're not actually the most aggressive cpus they're not the most modern either at least in the case of that uh, amd i would say the intel ones are a little more modern than most but it is still a four bay ready built nas with 2.5 g with uh wi-fi 6 and bluetooth built in if your nas os supports it and pretty much the base level hardware that all the other turnkey nas brands are throwing out there in this diy space and if the only thing i was going to talk about in this video today was those three solutions i'd have written off there and just gone Do you know what that's pretty 
darn good. And that brings us to this puppy here. Now, that is one of the ugliest prototype photos I've ever seen. Let's not dick around. That's horrible, that photo. It's overstretched. It's not showing me anything about it. But it makes me wonder how legit this is. And not in a bad way either, because I think they could bloody well do it. This is a 6 NVMe 6 hard drive system. Does that sound familiar? Does that sound like something we've talked about on the channel before? Yeah, that's right. This is a 6 hard drive RAID enabled and 6 NVMe 10 GBE equipped system running on that uh, new, a slightly higher rev um, Ryzen 7 processor inside there. Now, we don't have a lot more information on this than what we're seeing here on screen. This isn't a crowdfunding proposal. This isn't a brand trying to make a name for itself uh, by, you know, lowballing the price. Again, we've talked about that before with the Storexa comparison there, because this is a 5 bay, 5 NVMe system there, and there is stark crossover, I would say, in more recent updates from this brand in their campaign, if you look into a lot of the updates we talked about before, these seem like very similar systems there. Again, and this one being in crowdfunding, there's been a year in development and still not crossed the line at the time of recording this. Whereas this device here, you know, they've rolled out these devices. They're getting got a lot of good coverage. I mean, until we've got one in our hands, we'll have to wait and see. But overall, this is a brand that I'm really keeping an eye on. Notwithstanding that the base level hardware of these systems that they're rocking out right now is pretty darn good. Look at that CPU benchmark score for this CPU. This is a CPU, by the way, that's going to be giving a decent number of lanes. There may be slight restrictions, maybe times two or times one speed on those NVMEs. We'll have to wait and see whether they're going to be utilizing like an AS Media um, PCIe switch uh, buffer sort of built in there. But this is still a very good CPU that still balances of a great line between power consumption and power efficiency there. Which, again, makes me kind of think this thing's legit. Now, whether this is going to be just an AliExpress job, I'm not so sure. I think, given they've already rocked out early doors with the AU Star being listed here in the, uh, N1, uh, the R1 and R7 as an Amazon pre-order as it is, suggests an element of legitimacy that, that you wouldn't normally associate with these pop-up brands that come along. On top of that, I do think it's worth highlighting, and we talked about this before, that a lot of brands that go ahead and utilize crowdfunding, we talked about it before, Link Plus is another one that we talked about before, we talked about Storex, so we're talking recently about the Zimmer Cube. Um, all of those devices, a lot of those brands utilize crowdfunding because it's an entry gateway for their brand and their product to be marketed to a Western audience more effectively. A lot of the crowdfunding platforms will take that solution and then it allows them, uh, the, the brand in question, to be able to take advantage of pre-made marketing and promotion tools to kind of get their product out there. And a lot of the time, crowdfunding isn't just used because they don't have the money for the solution. A lot of the time, crowdfunding can be used to take advantage of a pre-existing marketing machine. So I'm kind of surprised that Ustar didn't go that way. And what makes me really pleased is that they didn't go crowdfunding, particularly after a brand that's ha already had quite a lot of solutions in the past, albeit the majority of them involved in mini PCs. And 2023, as it draws to a close, look at me and my Christmas jumper, has been a real year for flash solutions. We're seeing the affordability of M2 NVMe solutions arrive on the scene, along with a drop in a lot, and the price tag of a lot of those NVMe's, but it is combined hardware software solutions that I think are the ones that are going to bubble to the surface in 2024, because these are the ones that are going to give users the ability to not only take advantage of the larger, more affordable, low-powered hard drive storage, but also that faster NVMe as prices come down. We are going to keep an eye on this brand, uh, this brand going into 2024, because I do think they're worth keeping an eye on. They're one of these small clutch of brands in the DIY space that's occupying between turnkey and fully DIY solutions that are giving people pretty much fantastic bang for buck. But what do you guys think about this? What do you think of the brand? Do you think this is something you're going to wait and see? Are you not happy to trust them with your data? Or are you someone that just thinks, I just want to not have to get thermal paste under my fingertips? Let me know in the comments. But apart from that, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.